A couple of years ago, I wrote a story about a journalist called Max. Max makes a film about the wall that divides Palestinians and Israelis, about a young boy on the Palestinian side and a girl on the Israeli side. They become friends through flying kites. To them, the wall is no barrier. Max sees anger and despair all around, but in the children, the beginnings of hope and forgiveness. I've engaged with material of Michael Moore Pergo over the past two or three years on a number of projects. And through that, I came across a book called The Kites Are Flying, which I was intrigued by. And I thought this would be something to take further from page to stage. I talked to Richard Taylor, who's a composer, and has done some amazing work. And he said, well, what about we do something unusual and bring together a, a creative team that's already worked together and have a think tank for a couple of days? and see what sort of stage it might work on. I had just worked on The Go-Between, the musical theatre piece that I'd composed with a fantastic team of people. Roger Haynes was the director and David Wood I'd worked with adapting that novel, very complex novel, and Michael Pavalka was the designer. So I said they would be the perfect team because we all complement each other in a way because we all happily tread on each other's toes without it feeling like treading. I think we've all come to the consensus that there's an emotional story here that can be told and shared as a group of people, that there's an audience experience here, but how we tell that is still up for grabs. Michael's worked a lot with puppetry. I've worked in opera and dance as well as in musical theatre. And David, through his writing for children, has worked in almost every medium and has used every sort of storytelling device you can think of. So we've got a wealth of knowledge between us. We've all got a lot of tools at our disposal. It's a matter of finding which is the appropriate tool for the job. Kites is a wonderful metaphor, just taking off and being free and being carried by the natural wind and not hampered by things on Earth that pull them down. So they're a great metaphor for freedom. has its own musical style and its own musical voice as well. I enjoy working with non-Western musicians and instruments and, and blending them with Western instruments and the sounds that we're more familiar with. But to end somewhere different. Yeah. Shall we ask the question as when you read it, did you think it was theatrical? I did, because mm. of the the mess messing with time. I think it's fantastically oh. theatrical. Um, yes. and and this thing of, of, the, of the, the characters thinking things and not saying things. Per, the, the personalities, the situations are all theatrical. 
I think it's it, it, terribly it, well constructed. I felt the same as with the go between. Is that you can't put it on the stage linearly l start at page one and just tell it in the same way as the go-between. The go-between no. is not a theatrical treatment. We've, we had to reinvent it and I think similarly we've got to, we've got to reinvent this but I think, I, think it, I think there is something very theatrical about it. I think we've got to come back to this thing of, of whether we're talking children or not. If we're going to represent the child do we have to do it in a medium that he doesn't have a, an actual voice anyway like a, a sort of some sort of puppet representation or Shadow or some, we or have, some virtual have a second episode. person, maybe. We split him into two. Yeah. So you have the boy who is the boy, but you have the person who's, who's who is telling his what's going on in his head. This was one advantage. And you would do exactly the same with Max. You'd have to do the same. You'd use the, you potentially could use the same device. You know, with oh, your yeah. absolute designer hat on. Okay. Um, are you a bit averse to? integrating actual film footage within a theatrical piece? Instinctively, yes. But because it's a very strong component in this, it represents the view that we have of, of that part of the world. We do, that's how we experience it most of the time, through, through a documentary film. So it gives it sort of stretches important. the landscape. It just reminds us of that world view rather than the, um, the particular situation. So I think it's got, it's got potential. If you can't talk for whatever reason, I mean, whether it be a traumatic experience or that you're born there, I mean, another sense comes into being. And this, this, the fact that he's so fascinated by this camera, that intrigued me because I thought, well, why? And then I thought, well, probably it's just because he's never seen one like that before. I don't know. Well, because Ma Mahmoud, they loved films, didn't they? they lo he loved E.T. and he loved... Oh, yes. He says he yeah. loved, yes, he I loved suppose the so there's a link there, isn't there? Hmm. The boy is fascinated by the camera because it's digital and it's a bit like, you know... And that's why he I gives Max a bit more time. That's, that's why, why he, he gives it time a day. Mm. Yeah. And their relationship gets it's happened totally because Max teaches him how to use the camera. Absolutely and totally. And lets him use the camera. Yeah. Mm. And that's the beginnings of how he feels he can trust this man, like this man and so on. The trade-off is that he gives Max the kite. But when, of course, you've got singing on the stage, in musical theatre terms, we make up our own rules about whether other characters on the stage can hear that person singing. Yes. It could be that the child sings everything but the other characters don't hear yeah. that person singing but we don't know that they don't hear him singing to begin with we assume they do but but actually they're not hearing they only hear speech between mm -hmm. each other and our mr max only sp sp he sings his diary entries but he only speaks to other people on the stage and they only speak to him back so he speaks to Uncle Yasser, who speaks to him back. But when he's writing the diary, he sings it, because it's thoughts. Mm. However, whenever Saeed is on the stage, he's, he's singing quite happily, but nobody is hearing him singing. But so that would certainly simple. take us, the audience, a while to get into that, to understand that, that no one can hear him sing. Which would be intriguing. Which would be intriguing, because we would assume they can. There's a great emotional story at the heart of this, it brings a tear to your eye, the last, the last half page of this book. And if it connects in an emotional way, then that's a fantastic thing to share as a mass experience with a group of people.